Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Felipe. I'm from UTEP PR. I study mechanical engineering. Um, manager of the propulsion system of Keep Rocket. And I'm here to present uh, a little bit of the propulsion system and our engine for the Cobru 2018. This is some of the technical data of our engine. Uh, the chamber total length is 280 milliliters. Uh, chamber thickness is 2.5 milliliters. Uh, the book had the, the zone of uh, it's very fragile. Uh, we use 3.5 millimeters thickness. Uh, the propellant is a KNSU, and we use three grains of 100 millimeters. And the total mass of propellant is 888 grams. There's a thermal inhibition coating that uh, is inside the engine and it serves to protect both thermal and increase this, the stress resistance of the engine. And it's two millimeters thickness and the exhaust speed of our engine is, is approximately Mach 3.2. Uh, this is the design of the engine. Uh, here it is without the fixation system because we we did the simulation by part. We simulated part by part to to check if the resistance and the thermal resistance piece was okay and then we did one simulation with the whole engine. So start with the performance. Our medium operation pressure is one hundred uh, one thousand and eight psi. We are looking for a neutral burn. That's why we use a base model range. And the total time of burn is one second for our engine. Uh, the grain diameter is, uh, is 50 millimeters with a core hot center with 20.5 millimeters. Uh, this is the the chamber pressure graphics and thrust graphics of our engines. As you can see, the maximum pressure of our engine is 6.95 MPa, approximately 1,000 psi, and the average thrust is 1,020, 1,200 approximately. Uh, you can see we have a little bit of progressive burning uh, on this on this graph, but we using the base model brand, we 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 neutralize that to to a neutral burn. Uh, the materials that are being used uh, in our engine, we selected these materials because the the strength, the high high strength, and the uh, the cost. We, we didn't want materials to be very costly, so that's that's what we got. Uh, for the chamber, you use STM A160, hook head side 4140, and nozzle side 4140. The inhibitor, we, we made a, a, a 50 feet 50 cotton polyester fiber and epoxy. Uh, and this is the design of the chamber. Uh, like I said, it has 380 millimeters uh, length, and the, fi uh, the, the final and the start of the engine, we have 20 and 30 millimeters. That we are, we have a very, a very fine adjustment there, so we can have the. The pressure uh, very sealed inside the chamber. Well, like I said, we did the simulations of the parts separate and then everything together in the in the end. 
And this is the stress test of our chamber, uh, simulating the time of the stress. Uh, it's very, very fast because we have one second burn and it simulates just that. Uh, we concluded that the maximum tension on the chamber, it, it gets to about one thirty of the total resistance. So we have a very good margin. This is the book head. Uh, we started the, the project of the book head with the same thickness of the chamber. Uh, it was two millimeters at the start, but after the simulations, we found out that the center part of the book head is, a, is where we get the more stress in the engine. So we decided to change that to 3.5 millimeters. And then we have the same security coefficients uh, in the chamber. So oh, this is the design of the, the nozzle. Uh, we obtained that after a lot of CFD simulations uh, that was made by Kevin, uh, a member of the, the propulsion system that made his conclusion work in, the, in the mechanical engineering about the CFD analysis of this book, of, of this nozzle. And we optimize the, the geometry by using these simulations. I'm going to talk about that a little bit now. Uh, this, the CFD analysis, they were all made using open phone. And the algorithm that you, we made, we use it an, uh, in NASA website, we have some NASA analytical data. So you can validate your CFT analysis, and that's what we did, uh, validating our algorithm for future engines and future projects of nozzles we are going to make next year and, and, and so. Uh, and this is some of the simulations of the nozzle. We changed the conversion divergent angles, the, the we changed the, the radius on the on the nozzle. We changed a lot of things so we can obtain the maximum exhaust speed. And we we learned that the changing the radius in the nozzle is something that is very important because we prevented some backflow that probably would occur if, uh, if we didn't do that. And we ended the, the project with uh, with a 12 convergence angle and 30 divergence angle. Oh, uh, this is the, the individual of our engine. He, this is a picture. He's still on the mall. We found out the the better way to do that for us is to use an internal mold and to make the individual outside of this mold, and then we would come to the to the shop and cut it and and make the final adjustments because we are gonna fabricate the problem inside the the individual, so we're gonna have it very sealed inside, and we have a Tight adjustment, interference adjustment with the chamber. So we are sure that no hot gases are going to go inside the inhibitor and chamber and heat transfer with the chamber wall. It's very important because we are going to increase not only this, the, the thermal protection, but it's, very, it's a very resistant material and it increases the, the the stress strain shoot. Well, this is the full engine simulation we did after all the project was done. And like I said, the, the zone that we have more stress in the engine is still the bulkhead, but not, not by much. Uh, and this is the assembly of the engine that we made like three days ago. That's the day we finished the engine. 
We are still to test these engines graphically because we could not meet the propellant on time. And we expect you to test this engine maybe tomorrow or after. Um, in the propulsion system, we have a project to start working next year with liquid rock engines. And we, we started developing and studying about uh, pressure fed cycles, and we are gonna try to make an ethanol liquid oxygen engine with a regenerative cooling chamber. Um, in the first studies we find out uh, starting with gas, uh, gas generator cycles and turbine cycles very hard. So we are trying to build a pressure fed and then start developing liquid engines. This is the the first look at this, the the project. We uh, we have a helium tank and two pressure control valves. This helium tank maintains both of the tanks pressurized at high pressure at any time in the flight. Uh, a liquid oxygen and an ethanol tank. Then we have two flow control valves. The ethanol goes to a regenerative cooling system in the chamber and it mixtures with the oxidizer as the injector. And then we have the chamber and nozzle. Uh, uh, the, that's it, the presentation of the propulsion system of the rocket and our future works. And if you have any doubts, any questions, I'm here today. Hi, it was a great project, a good presentation. Congratulations to the team. Uh, I'd like to know what was the most challenging topic you faced during the project? Oh, the most challenging topic in this engine, I guess, was the CFP analysis. Uh, we started with ANSYS, but it's very hard to simulate that on ANSYS. And Kevin did a very good job uh, selecting the parameters and finishing the algorithm. I guess the work on the shop was very hard too. We had to do a lot of modes, a lot of things, a lot of things, and the work in the engine it was very hard. I guess these two parts was the, the hardest. Okay, and one of the biggest challenges of ro rocket technology is safety and reliability. Reliability. <laughs> what steps have been taken to maximize the safety and reliability of the design and operation of your engine? Oh, no. this is very important. This is very important in a, in a rocket engine. Uh, we know you, we can operate with a lot of weight, so all the our all the all the materials are are designed to operate at the limit. Uh, we do a lot of simulations and tests before flight, and I, I guess the selection and test of the materials. We did some non-destructive tests on the materials, like magnetical particles, and dimensional tests. And, and every time, this is a reusable engine, uh, right? So every time we use the engine, we repeat this test. We do it dimensional test on the engine so we make sure we don't have any plastic deformation in the engine no inside tensions view uh, and we are every day improving our safety procedures to to guarantee we are going to operate this engine with safety Okay, Team. and sorry. Okay. We have a question from YouTube. Uh, Mauricio Sai is asking uh, 
when do you intend to implement the liquid engine? Oh, after Kubruf, I already talked with my team. We are start. Uh, we already started study. Uh, we found out the some big difficulties like the CFD analysis of the chamber to prevent uh, some burn stabilities that are very common in liquid engines and the injector part probably are going to be the most difficult parts like like the regenerative cooling system too so we're going to start studying more heavily on these things after the group competition where our focus is right now on the solid engine and this, this three most difficult parts, uh, we are going to separate the team and study very heavily on January and February and start developing this as soon as we get back here at the university in March. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from YouTube. Uh, Rio Janeiro Rocket Groups is asking if you have, uh, did you have any difficulties in building the segment? Oh, we we did not start building it yet. We are at the start of the project. We uh, we found some problems even before start. A lot of problems before starting to to build the engine. We started the project with a kerosene liquid oxygen system, but found out that it's very hard to use a regenerative cooling system with this type of propellant because the kerosene is a uh, multi hydrocarbon and some of them turn gas at very low temperatures. And we had cavitation inside the chamber if we use this kind of propellant for the regenerative cooling. So we just changed that for ethanol. It's a very easy propellant to work. It's, it's very cheap to build high pressure systems of ethanol uh, in comparison with the kerosene that is, uh, the prices are very high to work with this material. Uh, so we are in the, in the process of solving the, the problems that are coming out with the, the starting project. We expect to start building it uh, um, maybe July next year to finish the project and start building. Great. Uh, GFRG uh, already has another question. Uh, what material do you use to make the tubular core? What? What material do you use to make the tubular core? Oh, the tubular core, uh, A160, A A ASTM A160. Uh, that, that's a material we could buy the, the chamber in, uh, already with the inside diameter we wanted, and it, it, it has no welding along the, the chamber, so we increase the resistance and we have the same resistance in now the chamber. Uh, GFRJ is asking about the solid engine. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I was talking about the solid engine. Okay. Uh, I have another question. Uh, in your future work, you intend to, to make a liquid. Uh, I was curious about what is the motivation uh, of seeking liquid engine? Oh, very good question. Uh, we started with the solid rocket engine with like almost uh, every team. And the next step probably is the hybrid hot engine. But we, we have a lot of engineering courses here. And one we don't have, it's a chemical car course. And it's very hard for us to work with this uh, it, it, this very hard propellant chemistry that are used in the hybrid engine. Um, so we decided to focus on another thing that is the liquid rocket engine. No one has ever built one completely on, on Brazil. Uh, and we are gonna we are not gonna have the same difficulty with the propellant. 
we're going to be working with a lot of hard things, but a lot of hard things that we, we really know how to work in the mechanical engineer and the, the other engineers we have on the propulsion system. But that was our main motivation to start the liquid engine. It was really the difficult to work with uh, high quality hybrid propellants. Thank you. Okay, I have some questions here. Uh, have you made any analysis to optimize the engine dimensions for some altitude? Uh, I, I didn't listen to the question, sorry. Sorry. Uh, have you made any analysis to optimize the engine dimensions for some altitude? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we made this analysis taking 1.2 kilometers with the, the mass of a rocket. And we just uh, designed the engine uh, exactly for the, the, the stress, 120 newtons, 1,200 1, newtons, sorry. And we designed all, all the grains and chamber and all the, the engine for exactly this this thrust because that's what what we needed initially when we talk it with the other systems and the, and define the mass of the vehicle. Okay, very good. I have a management question. What were the main decisions? you had to make in your rocket's design to balance performance, logistics, safety, and costs? Yeah, I guess the cost, it's a, it's a very big price. Uh, we don't have a lot of money like any other university project in Brazil. So we have to use materials that we have here that are available, that we know that it's going to have a good quality and we cannot use everything we just want like carbon fiber and everything and because it's costly it's very difficult to manufacture uh, the decision of the materials it was mainly about the cost and the manufacturer process that we have here at the university and we, what we can really do was just about cost and manufacturing this. And security, uh, of course, uh, we, we, cannot, we cannot turn that down in any, in any case. I have another question. Uh, are you taking any measures uh, to control the quality of processes? Uh, on manufacturing your propellant. Yes, yes. We we did uh, we develop a procedure to the fabrication of the propellant, and in this procedure we have a, a very tight temperature range for the, the for the manufacturing of the, the propellant. Because we know that in sugar rockets, the most critical things, the temperature that you you manufacture the, the propellant, you uh, the sugar melts uh, and it's gonna it, it gets a little bit brown. It's gonna caramelize, caramelize, and it deteriorates the propellant quality. So I guess the most important thing in our process. Besides all the molds and all uh, the cordage, yeah, all the, the things we, we manufacture to, to build the propellant, all the equipment needed, is the process itself that's very controlled. And we use a thermal bar to, to check the instant temperature every time, and we can regulate this temperature with resistance in the recipients. Okay, I believe we don't have any more questions. So before we finish, would you like to say a few words? 
Yes, yes. I would like to thank our uh, orient, uh, nosso orientador. Eu gostaria de agradecer em português aqui a doutora Emily Trevisan, que é orientadora do nosso projeto, a todo o apoio técnico na oficina do Malaquias e todos os professores da mecânica. E queria agradecer também a todo o time de propulsão por todo o trabalho duro, as muitas horas de trabalho na oficina e nos laboratórios também, simulações, projetos. Muito obrigado a todos. Obrigado também ao pessoal da EcoProof pela oportunidade de estar apresentando nosso projeto aqui. É isso aí. Muito obrigado a todo mundo. Thank you. Congratulations on your work again. And now we'll finish the transmission.